And I think we're working here. Uh, first Mob Crush stream. This is kind of weird because I can stream on my laptop now, so I can just kind of chill my Lazy Boy, which is way nicer than the uh, elaborate setup I had before. So we're going to try Adventures of Pip since I talked about it so much on the podcast. And I have my uh, Steel Show Stratus XL, I think this is set up. So the virtual control complaints that I had uh, hopefully are a non-issue. But it looks like, um, oh wait, here we go. So again, another thing I was talking about on the podcast, um, the, uh, shit. Game takes so long to load that you like think it's broken, which is cool. Um, okay, let me get situated here. Let me get the show on the road. So this game is pretty cool because it actually uses um, kind of like pixel art in a unique or otherwise interesting way. Um, kind of combines it in with the story of the game. So it's kind of like out here, like the, um, you know, the high res people are like the rich people in the world and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. I guess, because usually like pixel art is just thrown away as like, oh, this is the art style. You know, it is what it is. Oh, I should tweet this out while I'm the thing is rolling. Pictures of Pip. Um, let's see. Yes, Adventures of Pip. It is plural. So I, I don't know how much you care about plot at the beginning of games. I typically don't, so we're going to skip. So deal with it. All right, so to start, um, basically just control this little red dot here. And this is... This is what you can do as a dot. It's basically just bounce around. These little gems. Read the sign. So the sign's telling me I can float if I hold the jump button down longer. I can jump on this dude. That's what that sign says. So I haven't played this far enough yet to know what the little dots do, but I guess we'll see. squares here. Alright, so here's our first like major plot point here. We're discovering the uh, bad guy of the game here, uh, Queen DeRezia, who, uh, as you can see here, it's, uh, has the power to control the bitstream uh, and it limitless energy, which kind of sounds like, um, almost reminds me of like the Lego movie. So what? You don't know about the screen? That life is energy that flows all around us. Try to keep up. Uh, all right, so the bad guy is zapping the queen, or I guess that was the king and queen, down to single pixels, which, uh, not great, I guess.
Alright, so now we have to save the princess, because what would a video game be without a princess to save, right? That's a checkpoint we got, so it's cool. Here's our bad guy back again that's apparently burning the town and derezzing everyone. Oh, I should probably open these. I don't know what those do for me, but it's good to have them. All right, so basic world select map. Uh, here we are going to the next level. And again, if you just joined us, I'm playing uh, Adventures of Pip on my iPad Air 2 with the Steel Series Stratus XL, which in my opinion is the uh, way to play this game because the virtual controls, while they are workable, are just too small. Like, this game is just kind of effortless to play with the controller as opposed to uh, just being sort of frustrating with virtual controls. Please help find the others. So each level has three of those dudes that you can find. Um, and typically kind of hidden or something like that. All right, so small pathetic cube. Why do you pursue me? Uh, it's our Queen de Rezzi again. She's going to, I had to guess, knock this bridge down. Yeah, as far as people asking questions about Mob Crush, like right now, um, you either need a Mac or a jailbroken iOS device, uh, and you can stream directly off your device if you have uh, something that's jailbroken. Super easy uh, if you have a Mac, and I guess they're working on a PC client soon, so. All right, so this ghost dude is telling us something. Sir Elwyn, a brave and noble knight, protected our kingdom from the treachery of these dark woods for many years. These filthy beetles took the land and with it my life. All right, a little too much plot here. Bestow upon you, Pip, the power of Bitstream. With this, you can evolve and gain new abilities. All right, cool. So here we are, the Adventures of Pip. Uh, I've leveled up one level of resolution, I guess, is the right way to phrase it. And uh, as this dude's explaining here, uh, we can kill these glowing dudes to then kind of level up further. So like for instance, um, where I'll show you guys. So this, the button that's kind of obscured by my picture right here that has a little down arrow, if I push that, my dude turns back into a square um, and then killing that guy levels them up again. Or I don't know, level them up is the right word, but which point I can wall jump now. Finding these dudes. Oh, cool treasure. I feel like there's gotta be something up there. This game is just like dripping with secret areas, which is cool. Shit. Although I don't know if this is the area I was supposed to go out and the other one was the secret area. Oh, cool, just a big chest at the beginning. Awesome. All right. So let's see what we can come up with here. All right, there's another dude that I can up res myself on. This game is really cool. All right, so left trigger or B turns into a square. Alternatively, the down button. All right, so this is where I actually need to de-res myself. This is a really clever mechanic, because usually, um, I don't know, like pixel art games, like it's just pixel art because that's the art style they wanted. Oh, that's clever. Um, 
as opposed to actually using this um, using this art style as like a way that uh, kind of triggers gameplay is pretty cool. Uh, Solid Steve, I played it without a controller. It's not great. That's kind of why I have my controller paired with it this time around. Because uh, it's kind of not fun. All right, so we're going to teleport back to town. And I mean, I don't mean to say it's not fun, but it's uh, certainly better with a controller. Because it seems like, and we discussed this on our podcast, but it seemed like um, the... Uh, Developers obviously made this as a PC, you know, Steam game, and also released it on iOS, um, which, for better or worse, oh, what's this dude want? Uh, just kind of put virtual controls in that just, I mean, they're functional. And how well you do with them, I think, depends on how you are with virtual controls. Let's see what this merchant dude has. Uh, potion restore hearts, auto potion, that seems useful. I only have 300 though. Uh, treasure detector, eh. heart container. Heart container seems like that's what's worth saving up for. So I only have 300 dots, so. All right, well, fuck this town. Move on to Forest 1 2. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't let the virtual controls thing like stop you from playing the game, but like it, uh. Alright, so these blocks right in the way. How do we get past them? Alright, cool. So I need to de evolve. Blow them away. Um, anyway, I wouldn't I wouldn't let the virtual control thing like dissuade you from buying it, but it definitely is a pretty good reason to keep an eye on the various deals that uh, pop up. I mean, we've seen some of the like Steel Series Stratus controllers selling on deal sites for like you know, ten bucks or twenty bucks or something like that. Especially if you like platformers. Um, oh, cool! Here's one of these dudes. Yeah, especially if you like platformers. Like next time the iOS controllers go on sale, like I would definitely pick them up. I feel like they haven't done very well because you know they originally started at 80 bucks or whatever, and then quickly dropped in price down to like 20 or something ridiculous like that. See, like these kind of areas with all sorts of tricky jumping and stuff like that, uh, I imagine it would be quite difficult without virtual or without um, virtual controls. Uh, best controller, in my opinion, whatever the cheapest one you can buy is. They're all so similar. Yeah, I mean, personally, I, I really like the Stratus XL and the, um, I also have the, I had the Mad Cats one around here somewhere, I don't know where I put it. Um, it just wasn't pairing with my iPad today for whatever reason, but. All right, so hold down X to punch, okay, cool. Oh, cool. All right, neat. Uh, blow these away. Get this treasure chest. Got to save up our bits to buy that heart piece. All right. Pretty snazzy here. Question is, do we go this way? Yeah, what the hell? There's treasure to be had. Uh, 
So I don't know, I mean, like, I have basically all of the controllers um, somewhere around my house, and I really only use the Steel City Stratus and the uh, Mad Cats one with any regularity, because the other ones are just kind of too tiny. This is going to be a tricky maneuver here. Shit, shit. No, 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 no. I mean, like, if I, if Steel City Stratus one pops up uh, on some deal site for, like, you know, 10 or 20 bucks or whatever, I certainly wouldn't hesitate buying it, but... Alright, it's another level in the books. Only two dudes. That other guy must be hidden really well. All right, let's see what the options are for this. Oh, his settings and stuff. Um, I don't know if it's accurate to call this a Metrovania kind of game. I mean, I guess you could make comparisons to that, but it's level based instead of go anywhere. So I can jump on these mushrooms. Uh, I've heard really conflicting reports as to why controllers are expensive, and a lot of them come from. Shit. Wait. Oh, so the block can jump higher, huh? Well, that's clever. Um, anyway, the um, conflicting reports on why iOS controllers are so expensive. Um, the problem is a lot of the people that make controllers like never really want to. Like seriously comment on why that is, um, because they require on they require apps Apple Store distribution to do well, and you kind of don't want to, you know, be talking bad about Apple. Basically, that's a pretty terrible business decision as someone that sells an Apple accessory, because all it takes is pissing off the wrong person and you're out of the Apple Store. So, uh, but anyway. A lot of people have kind of told me the same sort of thing off the record. Shit, shit, shit. I need to be a square. I need to be a square. Um, and that, like, the testing process is just expensive. You have to buy the proprietary Apple chips to make your stuff authenticate with, um, like, iOS devices and things like that, which is why you can buy the Steel Series game controller like the the non stratus version for i think it retailed for 20 bucks uh, originally before the stratus launched and then as soon as the steel series stratus came out it launched at like 80 or something ridiculous like that all right we have one heart left which is i don't know if this is gonna yeah it's gonna drag me across uh, I guess we need to go down to block form. Mm, I'm not going to risk getting that guy because I'm really close to dying. Thanks for everyone that signed up to Mob Crush and following the channel and things like that. How do I jump down? I guess I need to be rezzed up, huh? I think everyone would like Spelunky on iOS, but the problem is, can you imagine Spelunky with virtual controls? Yeah, Mob Crush is super cool. Um, I was actually kind of surprised that uh, something I guess didn't exist before because it seemed like such a, such a good niche to get into. Because if you guys are, have stuck around from the Twitch streaming days, you know just how much those people hated, or not like, I guess random Twitch people hated mobile gaming. Which was kind of weird. And yeah, Mob Crush is supremely easy to stream to. Um, if 
you guys are curious about streaming, chances are, well, I guess you need a Mac, so that's kind of the tricky part, but, um, all right, didn't discover this last time. Um, if you have a Mac and you have a reasonably recent iOS device, you can stream on Mob Crush right now. You just plug in your lightning cable and, uh, load up your uh, Mob Crush client, which is a super small download, and you're just good to go. Fuck, I need to be one of these guys. Shit. All right, I'm gonna try that one more time, because that is looks like a pretty lucrative path to take. Yeah, Twitch is kind of a nightmare for us, because like, um, you know, like ideally you want everyone streaming, so you know you have a good representation of like everyone's different tastes and stuff like that. Because I mean, you know, I I hate certain games that other people like and stuff like that. Um, it's just really hard to get anyone else streaming on Twitch because like the PC and hardware requirements were just bananas. I mean, it was like really crazy. Uh, I don't know if the stream's gonna. Oh shit. I don't know if the stream's gonna be a daily thing just yet. Um, kind of need to talk to all my guys. Like, I, at absolute minimum, like either me or Jared will be streaming twice a week. We're gonna do um, what we used to do on Twitch, which was kind of like the um, like game requests, which I always thought that was cool. Like, we just download and play any game that people want, and then the. Um, like Wednesday or I guess Thursday maybe show where we play the new games of the week. So those are the two plans for us. Um, and then once everyone else gets their equipment or the Windows client gets set up, uh, everyone will be streaming. But right now the only people that have Macs are uh, me, Eric, and Jared. Checkpoint. Uh, yeah, tomorrow's games today is going to be a thing. Um, kind of need to figure out scheduling on that. And I think me and Jared might kind of trade off as to who's going to do it uh, since he can stream two now. Um, and doing all sorts of other neat stuff. Like whatever makes sense, I'm down for. Alright, let's see. I feel like I need to be the block for this. This is getting tricky. Hmm. I don't necessarily know if I care about what's in this chest enough. Oh, cool. So anyway, yeah, I mean, as, as soon as uh, we're rolling at full like operational capacity here, I imagine that uh, me and Jared will be doing pretty regular streams. Um, Eric likes streaming Vainglory, so look out for that. Um, Carter's going to be streaming. Sean's probably going to be streaming RPGs and stuff. Um, so, yeah, we should have a lot of cool content on Mob Crush. And, like, that's kind of what I wanted to do on Twitch from the get go, but I wasn't kind of expecting it to be such a hassle. Yeah, Hearthstone Brawl stuff, that'd be cool. Um, I don't know, really, down for anything. Whatever people want to see. Uh, yeah, streams will go up on YouTube after the fact. Um, well, I need to talk to the Bob Crush guys to see the easiest way to go about doing that. I know they can, but I just haven't... I haven't done it yet, so. But yeah, that's the plan, is to eventually archive everything on YouTube, so if you missed a stream, you can just watch it that way. Doesn't seem like very many people ever watch stuff on YouTube, but... Um, I 
this doesn't hurt to do it. jump on this. Well, that makes it easier. Oh, shit. Oh. Alright. Let's try one more time. Oh, I'm going to use my trackpad, not my iPad here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so much easier. Like, if you guys are even vaguely curious about streaming, like, you should just give it a go. I mean, um, if you're on Windows, give them a week or I don't know how long they're going to take for the client. It's like a couple weeks, I think. Um, but if you're on a Mac, like seriously, you could get started in no time at all. All right. Let's see if I can get past this terrible part of this game. <laughs> Can't, I can't imagine doing this with virtual controls. Um, you're just trying out some playing with the uh, Steel Series Stratus uh, XL. Which is a cool controller. It takes uh, two AA batteries, has an on off switch. Batteries last forever, so um, not being rechargeable is really kind of not an issue. Especially if you're good about turning it off. I think if you forget, it has a, a timer that will turn it off automatically after a certain amount of non activity, but. There we go. Yeah, the, the only kind of downside to iOS streaming is you're kind of, everyone's limited to the uh, output that Apple gives out the uh, you know, lightning port, which I believe is either 1080p or 720p, uh, 30 frames per second. Which kind of sucks, um, I mean, because you're missing out on the 60 frames a second that this game is running, but you know, whatever. Alright. It's a particularly annoyingly tricky part. Alright, so we're gonna run, jump, go down to the red cube, and then float over. There we go, perfect. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the problem with the 60 frames per second stuff is that uh, that basically requires Apple to take stuff that might be useful seriously, and they're busy doing things like Beats 1, Worldwide, Always On, 24-7, etc. Alright, so we have a hero coming through. This guy looks like he's rezzed up one more than um, we're capable of doing right now. Hopefully that means we're getting a cool new ability soon. Nobody likes a square peg in a round hole. Rezzed up one more to slide down there. Makes this dude's positioning kind of predictable. Shit. Alright, let's try to do without dying. No. Oh god. God, I need a heart. Totally gonna die on this. Cool. 
heart. Oh, please. Any kind of healing would be great. Uh, no, I think this game's two bucks or three bucks or something like that. Oh, <laughs> of course you get squished there. All right, so this is my complaint number two with this game. Uh, virtual controls aren't great, and checkpointing is real bad for a mobile game. I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm playing this on my iPad with the controller out and stuff like that, so I'm very much, like, very much not playing it like a mobile game, you know, which is pull your phone out of your pocket and fart around for a couple minutes to put it back. Um, but man, this is a lot of lost progress for dying. Take a shoot. Res up. Fuck that chest. Alright, shoot down here. Kill this dude. Kill this dude. Oh, hang. This chest. Alright. Now back where we were before, almost. All right, so mental note, don't get squished on this platform. Uh, treasure cubes, you are basically in-game currency. You can, uh, between levels, go to a shop which sells kind of surprisingly expensive. Uh, checkpoint, cool. Shit, <laughs> oh god, I might as well just die. Um, the shop sells surprisingly expensive upgrades for your dude. Like, uh, I'm gonna save up for, I think the extra heart thing was 2,000. I should pay attention instead of talk. All right, kill this guy. Kind of weird how they threw like so much plot at the beginning of the game at you, but now it's like nothing. Maybe we're hmm. care about this guy enough. I'm not gonna get all three. Fuck it. Checkpoint. Well, maybe I'll try now. Detroit Lady a style game with a level editor. That sounds crazy. Checkpoint's not far away. Uh, favorite iOS game currently? That's like a trick question. I'm playing a lot of Fallout Shelter, but I don't know if I would call it my favorite game. Uh, I think Candy Crush Forever, but I don't know if that's my favorite game either. I guess favorite game if you were going to tell your friend what kind of game to get, because they just got a new iPad, would probably be like The Room 2. Maybe. I don't know. There's too many good games. That's the problem. That's the problem with Touch Arcade. We'll give us shit because we score stuff high, but it's like there's no shortage of good games. How do you not score stuff high?
feel like there's got to be like a major plot point or something coming up. I mean, they played that on so thick at the start of the game. A boss or something. Getting new obstacles, that's cool. Same annoying dumb little beetle things. I don't know, it's easier to be like, what are some really good iOS games? What's your favorite game? I don't know, I play a lot of Hearthstone, but I kind of got bored of that, so I don't know if that still counts as a favorite game. But, I mean, my Hearthstone boredom is where because it, we're very much like between sets right now. Um, which kind of happens a lot, like when I play Magic and stuff. It just kind of gets boring once you get all the cards and that shit. Crap. Alright. Dear God, please let there be a checkpoint. Uh, what am I supposed to do here? So we can see if we can bounce off this thing. Oh, cool. Ah, oh, checkpoint. Hmm, I don't know if I needed that. Uh, currently using a Steel Series Stratus XL, but I have basically all of the MFI controllers. They're all pretty much the same. We posted a, uh, or Carter posted an article, um, I guess we published it on Friday, maybe? Um, of the current, like, roundup of the outlook of MFI controllers right now, and I don't know. I guess the answer of what's the best one is whatever one you get for cheap. And I follow Magic, I kind of don't really play too much anymore. I said about my house, I don't have... Really have time like I used to. Oh crap. Oh, these checkpoints are so far. Like seriously, these checkpoints are nuts for a mobile game. Sure, you can probably get it for cheaper. Uh, Steel Series Stratus XL. It's just a matter of being patient. But like seriously though, you should just buy whatever one is the next one you see on a deal site, because they get their price slashed like crazy. Um, like whatever site it is that the Woot guys are doing now, I think it's Meh.com, meh.com. You iOS game controller deals all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's real obvious this is a Steam game ported. I mean, it seems like the amount of effort that went into the port is basically like, okay, cool, this runs on iOS now, ship it. Oh my god, oh god, get me out of here. <laughs> so close to the end. Uh, like Amazon has them uh, clearanced usually. Uh, I think if you search for Steel Series Stratus on Amazon right now, they're real cheap. I don't know here, I'll look right now. Um, Amazon. Stratus. 
Oh, 60 bucks, I guess. Yeah, what's annoying is the Steel Series Free, which is the exact same controller, but it doesn't work with the. Uh... Oh, they have refurbs for 42 on Amazon right now. That's decent, I guess. But they get cheaper. Let's just keep an eye on Touch Arcade. Uh, we usually post about it when they get real cheap, so. Red dudes that pursue you are annoying. All right, let's see. I think they're not really throwing new game mechanics at us as fast as they were originally. Yeah, I kind of agree that the concept's better than the execution. Like, they, they front load a lot of the plot and stuff, too. So, um, you know, initially you download the game and you're like, oh, wow, this is really neat. Uh, but so far, we are close to 45 minutes in and kind of. It is what you see. But, I mean, whatever, three bucks. Like, how much can I complain? I uh, haven't spent a lot of time with the new update of Out There, but that is a outstanding game, so... Maybe I'll stream that next time. guys that shoot the balls are annoying as hell. I need to be a red square to bounce on those, huh? Uh, no, I never really got into Vainglory. Um, the problem is I play League of Legends. So Vainglory to me is like, oh, this is League of Legends, but I don't own all the dudes. As opposed to League of Legends, which I know Joker spent an embarrassing amount of money on. Uh, this is probably not good to be falling. <laughs> on iOS not made by let's see the end of the question on my chat client yeah Fate Server was pretty good but like the problem is once you're invested in a mobile economy like I, I seriously have spent like $1,500 on League of Legends so for me that is my MOBA if I'm gonna play a MOBA, I'm gonna play League of Legends. So, personally, like, Vainglory and stuff just doesn't really interest me that much because the session links are long enough that um, it's not really solving any kind of problem for me to be playable on a tablet. Because, like, if when you think about it, playing a MOBA is really, really um, like time and concentration intensive. Um, so you know when you when you sit down to play, you know whatever Dota, League of Legends, uh, like it doesn't matter what game it is. You basically can't look away, you can't pause, uh, can't do anything like that. So if you're going to commit to that kind of like, uh, I don't know, I guess concentration time. Like, just because it runs on an iPad doesn't really do too much for me. Here's his, I don't really like Here's the Storm. I don't know. I 
The problem with Tears of the Storm is I never reach a point in that game where I'm like, I don't know, like, if you guys have played League of Legends or League of Legends like MOBA, um, you eventually will reach a point where if you're doing well, it's like, oh my god, I'm so far ahead, this is amazing, like, I'm, you know, just steamrolling the enemy team because, you know, my creep score is really high or I got a couple of early kills or whatever else like that, but it seems like in Heroes of the Storm, because of the team-based experience stuff, you never really have that kind of like, uh, I guess, power curve boost or whatever. Um, it's like, for instance, uh, it's kind of like, I don't know how to explain this in a way that is friendly for non-League of Legends people, but uh, so in League of Legends, say you are a, uh, like a ranged attack champion. Um, when you get 1,500 gold, actually I think they might have increased it to 1,550, but whatever, it's relevant. Uh, you get an item that really gives you a ton of attack damage, which you then can, uh, gives you like a power spike in lane, so you come back to lane with that item and it's like, oh my god, this is amazing, like I'm doing so much better than the enemy dude. Um, but that doesn't happen in Heroes of the Storm. You just kind of like get your abilities and stuff. Apple Watch for gaming? Eh. I mean, I'm wearing an Apple Watch, but do I play games on it? Not really. The best game for it right now is a freaking clicker, so. Uh, Rune Blade, I think is what it's called. All right. Um, pretty close to clearing this level. I'm not gonna bother with that dude. I don't know what you get for getting all three guys. It seems like you just die a lot. Uh, I don't know anything about the Elder Scroll card game. At least nothing that anyone else doesn't already know. Um, met with Bethesda's Pete Hines at uh, shit, at E3 and. Um, Dude's really tuned in to making a good mobile game, like, um, but I don't, what's tricky is, like, so talking to Pete, like, he totally gets it, like, he gets what makes a good mobile game and uh, gets the direction that Bethesda needs to go in and stuff like that, but when you look at um, uh, Fallout Shelter, it's like, I don't know if they do get it, because that's a free-to-play game that basically breaks every shit free to play convention of uh you know an update cycle and uh content updates and um kind of like user testing sort of stuff so i don't know haven't really figured out the schedule for the streams yet um i don't know i need to talk to everyone and uh Mob Crush, either, I need to either get uh, my guys everything that they need to, god damn it, to stream, or Mob Crush needs to get their Windows client out before everyone is streaming, but um, me and Jared are definitely going to try to stream a couple times a week, and uh, Eric's probably going to stream some Vainglory or whatever else, so uh, give us a couple weeks to kind of get into a groove here, and... Um, we should have everything pretty under control. And yeah, Fallout Shelter is cool, but I feel like there's so many missed opportunities there. Like that game, that game is cool, but it could have been so much better. Which kind of sucks. secret stuff up that way, but yeah, Hearthstone's really good. It's just a matter of like 
between expansions, like any uh, collectible card game, you kind of hit a point where it's like there's not a whole lot to do because the metagame kind of gets stagnant and uh, you, know, you kind of collect all the cards you want. War, this War of Mine, I feel like it's coming soon. I mean, they're doing pre-orders for the Android version, although I don't know what pre-order for a downloadable game necessarily means. See, so I, I disagree with Fallout Shelter being the best free-to-play game. Um, oh, fuck. Because... Um, so the reason that people like Fallout Shelter and the reason people are like, oh my god, Fallout Shelter is the best free-to-play game I've ever played um, is because they've obscured their timers in a clever way. Like, um, they've made you think that there's no timers in the game by allowing you to do the rush thing. Um, but the problem is the rush thing, like, that is a timer. Because you only rush a couple times, uh, at which point your failure rate's so high there's no point in bothering. And then you have to wait anyway for it to go down. So... In reality, all Fallout Shelter has done is kind of spread out the resources that you get from each timer and obscured it through multiple button presses. Oh, I don't know what I need to do to get up there. All right, what is stage clear? Cool. All right, well, um, I gotta, gotta kind of get going, guys. I am going to see WWE tonight, uh, the, raw, the taping of Raw. So uh, we have camera side seats uh, right in the center. Um, so you might see me on Raw, maybe if you watch wrestling. I don't know. I got, I got my John Cena towel ready to go. Never give up. So um, keep an eye on the site. We're going to. Uh, do a lot more of these streams and stuff and um, kind of figure out a schedule that works for everyone and um, you know, make sure no one misses anything. We're going to upload everything on YouTube. So if you do miss a stream, it's not a big deal. Uh, and uh, I guess as we keep rolling out what we're doing with um, Mob Crush and stuff like that and all of my other writers and stuff get on board, like we're going to be streaming a lot. So um, there shouldn't be any kind of uh, drought in streaming, I would think. So, um, let's probably try to stream tomorrow, uh, or get someone else to stream, maybe stream tonight. Um, not really sure, but definitely download the Mob Crush, uh, app if you haven't. I think all you have to do to get it is go to mobcrush.com slash beta on your mobile device. Um, subscribe to T Touch Arcade and you'll get an alert whenever we, uh, are streaming. Um, so it's good. It should be uh, all seven of us uh, streaming inside the next couple weeks once everyone kind of gets all situated and stuff like that. Um, I, have to, I have to actually like ship an iPad out to uh, Sean and stuff, and he lives in Japan, so that takes a long time. So um, we'll see. I don't know what liking does, so I guess like away. Um, yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed Mob Crush, and definitely keep an eye out. We'll be doing more of these. So. Um, Yes, have a good day, and I don't know. I'll see you soon. Yeah, I don't have a sign made up for Raw. I should probably do that, but it's time to go. So, uh, sorry, guys. See ya. <laughs>